In today's video, I have the Acremake M5 3D printer in for test and review. Weirdly, this was a printer that in its inception, I really wanted to try. However, for one reason or another, it didn't come my way until after their second printer launch, the M5C. And you can see the M5C video in the description, also by clicking here or at the end of the video. There are some key differences between the two. The bed size, the M5 has a screen, camera, AI, and even has kit from Knight Rider on board. All systems go, Michael. But what does the previous generation show against the new model? And we can't get there without price and removal of some of the features. The M5 comes in at £649, 699 US, and the M5C bizarrely comes in at 399 and $399. While both printers do boast up to 500 millimeters per second in printing speed, they share very similar looks and are easy to assemble and have been well thought out from the perspective of a new user. I felt that the M5C's features were somewhat lacking, but having now used the M5, there really isn't much in it. And maybe I was just missing something because it just was on the other device. Which begs the question, do we even know what we really want anymore? The choice of 3D printer specs are now so dramatically profound. Which really just made me think, the more things change, well, the more they stay the same. And really all we're doing here is pushing plastic for a hot end. But then, that's not just all we're doing. As the multicolour printing path is now well established, and it looks like Acremake is already on its way to producing six colours on this very model. And of course, an NDA would stop me from talking about that, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Good news, PCBWay.com have sponsored this video. As you might already know, I recently spent some time over in Shenzhen in China, and I really thought that I should catch up with my channel sponsors. While I'm sure that you can already guess that PCBWay manufacture custom PCBs, that's not all they do. 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding are just a few of the things that they do in addition. We had an educational walk around at one of their factories. Thank you once again to PCBWay.com for sponsoring this video. Say hello. Hello, this hello. is Cecilia from PCBWay. Hello, this is Zoe. Let's get back to business. The M5 boasts a printing volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters, with a max printing speed of 500 millimeters per second and acceleration of up to 5,000 millimeters squared, whereas really normal printing speed is 250, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. You can expect to print materials such as PLA, PETG, TPU and ABS successfully with their direct drive system. The extruder maxes out at 260 degrees and the bed up to 100 degrees. You have all the usual refinements such as filament runout sensors, PEI beds and a rather loud cooling fan and marginally annoying retraction noises from the extruder. That's not a feature by the way, it's entirely normal according to the support team and it's like listening to crickets. Anyway, auto bed levelling as previously mentioned and that all works rather well. The artificial intelligence seemed to be a little bit hit and miss and that might be down to my lighting, but it errored quite frequently certainly around the first layer, which to my eyes certainly appeared fine. But the AI took exception to that, so well I switched it off. If you feel so inclined though, you can also hook this up to the Amazon Alexa and it'll tell you when your print is finished, otherwise you can use the app on your phone and you can see it for yourself. Michael, this is all very confusing. Tell me about it. What about the app? One of the standout features of this machine, and it's really a trend that we didn't see until maybe a year, year and a half ago, is apps for printers. So prior to this, really, we only had Clipper and Octopi, but this wasn't really a standout app at that particular point. What we're seeing now is apps that are able to not only show and monitor what you're printing, but also giving you the ability to select models and print them from your phone, but also download and slice models also from your phone. The app, however, is a little bit slow and clunky, and you're going to be reliant on server and internet speeds. I did, however, manage to download and slice, well, quite a few models. So these were all models that were downloadable from uh, the app and printed from the app. Check that little guy out there. Hopefully that'll... Uh... There we go. Check him out. He's a uh, print-in-place model, flexible. Then we've got this guy. We have got Halloween coming up, so this is part of their Halloween competition. Uh, then we've got this guy. Hopefully that'll, there you go. Again, all of these models do look super defined and uh, probably as good as they look on, on camera there. Then I did mess up something with this little dog because I didn't actually print any supports on it. But then when I did, it kind of came out absolutely brilliant as well. I want to show you this model though. This is a model of Manhattan, which has been uploaded by user 3Woo, who I can only assume works for Acremake. 
I've seen a number of similar style models across platforms, but this was their model on their search engine. So I thought, well, why not? I'm pretty impressed with it, taking around 10 hours to print. The printer coped reasonably well with this model, however I do think that maybe slowing it down on some of these elements would have made a better print overall. And slicing from the desktop may have helped the quality here. The print in place model GoFu toy as you can see did show promise, however the layer lines on close up are very apparent. So I continued forth with various app obtainable slice models, various low poly and fast prints this rhinoceros was, well, so-so. And following on from that, the print-in-place frog, especially around the eyes, could have done with some dialed-in pre-slicing. Slicing and sending the files from your desktop, I feel, would certainly have wielded a better overall quality due to being able to mod the parameters and slice the model as you see fit. The online quick slice, well, while it might be quite good, doesn't give you the best overall print quality. So what were the prints really like? Well, overall, the prints produced by the M5 were pretty much in keeping with what you'd expect, good but could do better with tweaking and it really comes down to playing around with the slicer and dialing in a profile. Being able to select the files and print is just fine but it does really come at a cost in some cases with the quality that you can get from that model. This little skeleton though was a favourite of mine. What about comparisons between that and perhaps a Bamboo Lab printer, for instance, the A1. Well, as you may have seen in my A1 video, I did print out one of these dogs on that very printer. And the quality and the differences between the two are substantial. There's a lot of snot and little abbreviations that have been left in the print, um, certainly with the M5. But again, slicing remotely, is probably gonna be a major factor in regards to that. So what about the unboxing and setup? Well, I thought I'd leave this to last as I wanted to give a special shout out to Zachary Freddy Prince for uh, basically saying that he wanted to watch this review. So cheers, Zach, and I will see you hopefully at Form Next. So when I look to try and review a 3D printer, I look at several things, including the overall experience it's clear that Akamake expects that anybody using this printer for the very first time should have the best experience possible. And I think they have delivered on that. Getting the printer out of the box and popping in a few screws is simple enough. Plugging it in and switching it on, downloading an app and starting your very first print has been made very, very simple. Having said that, I did have one small issue with a crushed PTFE feeder tube, which for some might have been quite a big sticking point, but for me, it was easily resolvable and was merely down to a pinch point inside of the box. So what are my final thoughts on this? So overall, I would say that the print quality isn't too bad, certainly from a slicer that's being used on your mobile phone. Um, that being said though, of course, using their particular slicer and dialing it in, you'd certainly get better results in the long run. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have Make sure you hit that subscribe button, time. chuck us a little like. Comments, of course, always go in below. You are watching a master at work.